What up though, I'm Merce, Hip Hop DX, and this is The Breakdown. Old school, new school, need to learn, no. The rap generation gap is wider than ever these days. In some markets it's so bad that old heads have to have their own classic rap station because they don't want to hear all that mumbling. And these new rappers, most of them can't even name you one song by any of the hip hop greats because in their minds, none of these old dudes even measure up to Drake. The more either side opens their mouth, the wider the divide becomes. So do we continue to let nature take its course or do we attempt to bridge the gap? Is the gap even bridgeable? Rap's generation gap, old heads versus young bucks. Let's break it down. When rap first hits the airwaves in 1979, it looks and sounds sort of like this. Cute and harmless enough, and although it existed in clubs, basements, and parks throughout New York City since 1973, this was mainstream America's first taste. In the beginning, the older generation thought that rap was a fad that they'd have to endure until their kids got old enough to know better. But thank God, and as we all know now, they were completely wrong, and 40-something years later, rap is all grown up. It just looks a lot different than it did in the beginning. Currently, you could take a handful of the hottest rappers and have quite an assortment, from Jay-Z to Lil Uzi, Run the Jewels to 21 Savage. And back in the day, there wasn't as much diversity as there is now, but rap has always been a fast evolving and somewhat trendy form of music. Early on, there are groups and crews like the Sugar Hill Gang, Furious Five, and the Soul Sonic Force. They'd have their street clothes, and then on stage, they'd rock more flamboyant disco-inspired apparel. But a mere three to four years later, enters a young Run DMC, and now Bambada, Melly, and the other boys were old school. The wardrobe change was drastic, and the rhyme style was a little bit evolved and not quite as simple. And boom, just three years later, while Run DMC is still peaking, Cool Keith and the Ultra Magnetic MCs drop their Eagle Trip in 12 inch off their critical beatdown LP, taking shots at the Kings of Rock for being too elementary with their rhymes. Cool Keith. Now you can simple back and forth, the same old rhythm that a baby can pick up and join right with them, but the rhymes are pathetic. They think they go pathetic, using nursery terms, at least not poetic. Another huge beef was between James Todd Smith, aka LL Cool J, and Cool Mo D. Only six years age difference, but Mo D felt like LL wasn't showing respect to his predecessors and was also stealing styles. This battle is well documented if you want to look into it online, but ultimately, LL brings home the W for his generation. In hindsight, I feel like the community could have done a lot better by the OGs of that era. But rap was still new and people were still figuring everything out. So in the midst of progress, we may have tarnished our legacy a little bit. Throwing some hunger and greed from the new kids, some animosity and bitterness from the old heads, and that era of rap gets officially left behind and deemed corny. Now that said, even though the new MCs left the OGs in the dust, so to speak, there wasn't a rapper alive at the time that didn't know the names and material of the kings that ruled the generation before them. Now let's move on to the late 80s and early 90s. Rap is moving full steam ahead. MCs are going platinum and gold, north, east, west, and south. Sex rap, conscious rap, gangster rap, pop rap, rapidy rap, and for the first time ever, mainstream bubblegum rap with legit teeny bop rappers. There was The Youngsters, Another Bad Creation, and the kings of kids bop, Criss Cross. For the most part, these bands were prefabricated and primed for performance on the charts. But there were more mature acts like the Native Tongue's Chi Ali. Then they got a little edgy with acts like the Wu Shaheem the Rugged Child and Illegal. But as evident by the lack of sales, the masses weren't ready for that young thuggin'. But while this new generation broke a lot of hearts and fashion laws, they never broke the code. They had much respect for the culture from their contemporaries to the OGs. Check out these bars of respect from the youngsters. Knock, knock, I said, pop at your door, giving you more for 94. Back from LML and Grandmaster Flash. People thought that hip hop wouldn't last. The treacherous three, Africa, Bambada, Curtis Blow made hip hop hotter. Slide to the rhythm, let your body jerk. Remember all the bass from my man Ku Hurt. Once again, even though these acts were young, they would never dare say they never heard of the Furious Five or the Cold Crush Brothers. But let's just say they didn't. The people that brought them into the game, the Dallas Austins, the Michael Bivens, the Jermaine Dupri's, wouldn't even allow them to say that. Come on, JD got to start dancing for Houdini. You know we have respect for the game. Aside from the guidance they received from their respective camps, the young MCs of this era had the opportunity to grow up on a wide variety of hip-hop. There was a full spectrum of rap on the radio, from positive to gangster. 
Why is radio important? Because in the late 80s and early 90s, this was still how people encountered new music, especially children. But in the mid 90s, the subject matter of this popular radio rap takes a hard shift towards the streets. Around 1997, the world is introduced to a group of young men who called themselves the Hot Boys. All very talented in their own right, but I'd like to focus on the youngest of the bunch. 14-year-old Dwayne Carter, already tatted up, flag-waving, and running from the law. Having grown up on gangster rap, this generation of kid rappers was much different than the previous. Well, except for one thing. Roll the clip, James. Bang! Left I was too playing, get hurt. Mother lucky I don't curse, but I wet up his shirt. He was allowed to talk about selling drugs, shooting people, and use the N-word, but he wasn't allowed to curse. No four-letter words, and still, no disrespect for the old school. He doesn't mention them in his verses or dedicate a whole song to them, but the respect for the culture is evident by his commitment to the craft. As I did my research for this week's topic, I came across things like Nelly and Karis One's beef, but that seemed less generational and more mainstream versus underground as I looked into it. I also came across Witch Homie Quan and Lupe Fiasco slip up at the Hip Hop Honors, and those were significant, but to me, what really set it off was this incident in 2007. And to be honest, an older head threw the first punch. Fuck Soldier Boy, eat a dick. This nigga single handedly killed hip hop. And then Soldier Boy replies with, This nigga Ice T old as fuck, man. <laughs> this, nah, this nigga old enough to be my great grandfather. Like, he's the forefather of my nuts, nigga. Yes, Ice was wrong for disrespecting a kid, but I feel the media was also wrong for jumping behind and supporting a flash in the pan, one hit wonder, and tearing down a hip hop legend. Look, you have to be conscious of who's watching. Guess who was in middle school running around laughing at the old nigga? Lil Uzi, Lil Yachty, and a young Lonzo Ball. This is a generation that looks to the internet as a place from whence all validation flows. So all their young minds could glean from the issue was that old is lame and people in power only respect what's new and hot. Therefore, Lil Uzi feels like it's okay to say something like this. Oh, he making me rap on that. What you want to rap on? You know how I rap. Well, yeah, why you, yeah, you can't I mean, ever say that about a premiere beat though. You're like, you making me rap on that. I'm trash. Like, but see, I, I, do that, I do that to your young cats to see what y'all yeah, really built hey, though. You hear me? I'm, I'm too, I'm too, really I'm too young. And first round draft pick Lonzo Ball feels it's okay to say this. Y'all outdated, man. Don't nobody listen to Nas no more. Real hip hop is Migos, future. But no matter how angry you get, there's never an excuse to go full rap report like this. Lonzo Ball, you funny looking motherfucker, you. You said that Nas ain't hip hop? My man, you grew up in Chino Hills. What the fuck do you know about hip hop? Look, man, they're kids. You don't take to social media and tell them to eat a dick or that their new shoes are ugly. Why? Because you're a fucking adult. You're here for guidance and wisdom, not beratement and bullying. You always get better results when you talk to someone rather than at them. And there's no better proof of this than the interview with Lil Yachty and Ebro, who used to be opposing forces. Only thing I kind of hate is that I kind of spoke so quick on, you know what I'm saying? I don't know this, I don't know that before I even gave it a chance to listen. Well, that's what you're saying about look people judging you. That's why I came on here. That's why I wanted to do this with you because I, you know, before I said that, I just was in the blind. And I can't, and I feel like, I feel like I, I owe an apology. I didn't think before I spoke on that topic. You know what I'm saying? I know now how important and just how serious it is to certain people. Aw, doesn't all that thug healing just warm your heart? Look, bitter old heads, if you want to save the culture like you say you do, then recruit from within. Stop, show respect, and build with the talent that kids already think is hot. Or step away from the spotlight for a second and invest in the youth like Michael Bivens, Dallas Austin, and Jermaine Dupri did. Or option three, shut the fuck up. Watch them develop. Look at Tyler and Mac Miller. Early on, they caught a lot of flack from hip hop purists, but now I think they've matured into quite the assets for the culture. Final option, stop calling them hip hop. A lot of these kids don't even wanna be hip hop. And as the culture continues to grow, maybe all rap music shouldn't be considered hip hop. And if we strip them of the title, I don't think they would give a fuck. But if we exclude them, isn't it hip hop that's really missing out? You might say hell yeah, you might say fuck no. Let's talk about it in the comments below. And as always, for more music and news, check out hiphopdx.com.